Hello, my name is Elton N, and welcome back to my channel. Here we talk about fashion, lifestyle, and books with a little bit of an alternative twist. This is not one of those three subjects. Well, kind of. Here's the thing. I'm not going to recap Descendants for you. I'm not going to recap the Descendants books because I'm assuming you've already watched them. Because today, I... I'm going to explain the Descendants timeline to you. And this might sound like, what do you mean the Descendants timeline? There's one, two, three, and four. No. No. Please. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you do the thing that the children of Disney villains and the heroes movie was simple? Are you like, hmm, some things don't make canonical sense because they are not supposed to. Let me take you on a journey. There is a currently incomplete but mostly complete timeline that I found from Reddit from this user over here that we're going to go over really quickly. So we're going to go over this timeline and instead of recapping we're going to um, talk about some interesting things that we learn in each one of these installments. And then at the end we will go over the entire official timeline. We start like all good things with merch. Um, if you didn't know, uh, the Descendants books are, in fact, an advertisement for the Descendants movies. Uh, all of it is merch. <laughs> it's important merch because it establishes some of the lore. Now, people may tell you some things are not necessarily canonical, that maybe even some books are completely uncanonical. No. Everything in this timeline is canonical. Everything. In the, I the book, Isle of the Lost, we learn some interesting facts uh, one of which is that there are three schools in the isle of the lost you may be like well why the fuck would the villain kids have school i don't know that one i can't explain there's not like a middle school or an elementary school it like, seems like there's just three high schools other crazy things about dragon hall specifically is the one that mal evie and carlos attend people that are canonically teachers in this school is dr facilier is the headmaster who put that man in charge of a school is lady tremaine teaches an evil schemes class. Mother Gothel teaches a selfishness class. And there's in fact an evil world history class. And the Professor Yen Sid is the science teacher. Now that we've gone over um, the United States of Oradon, let me pull out the whiteboard because we have some information about the characters now. Thing about Carlos, he knows science. He's very good at science. He's very good at technology. He and Evie have a little bonding moment. And in this bonding moment, he breaks through the barrier that's through the Isle of the Lost and is able to stream Disney Channel canonically, which has the implications for the world that Disney Channel exists because they see a show. And this show is called Live and Maddie. And if you remember Live and Maddie, Live and Maddie was played by Dove Cameron, and Dove Cameron plays Mal, which means canonically in the Descendants franchise, there are two Dove Camerons running around. There is Dove Cameron, which means canonically in the Descendants franchise, Mal, literally the Queen of Oridon, has a doppelganger who is an actress on a TV show. And is blonde. Other things that we learn, especially about the Isle of Lost, Mal and Jay have been besties for the most amount of time. Mal gets along with Carlos at the end, but she's a bit of a bully. All right, she sucks. She bullies people, and Carlos goes along with it. When Evie comes back, Evie and Mal had a spat when they were six years old, and she held a grudge. And then ten years later, they get along, and now they're all besties. In between this time between this scene and the end of the Isle of the Lost they have a gang of the four of them and they ha they have a like a little house or like a little warehouse in the Isle of the Lost okay so within like six months they form a gang have a home together that's the Isle of the Lost the Isle of Lost is very easy to excuse their action because it's b villains and bad guys and they suck what's not able to be excused is this man right over here. This is Ben. He's the love interest. He's cutie patootie. He's also gets crowned the king at the age of 16, which is a wild sentence. 
I'm sorry, your father is in perfect health who created this, the, the country that you live in and the system of government that you're in, and he decides, ah, I'm a fuck off and retire. Let my 16-year-old son run it. Ben doesn't have any siblings. If he was to be assassinated, like, what, what, would the beast just take over as king again? What happens if he doesn't have an heir? As a 16-year-old. They call it an Oridon tradition. Oridon's been around for 20 years. Max. Max 20 years. Maybe if we're if we're generous, 25. You can't have a tradition when you've only had one king who was not crowned at 16 because he made the country. Also, along with the beast, who is the king of the country and made the country. Capitalism exists, okay? Capitalism exists, and we know it exists because in the first book, a 16-year-old has to deal with a sidekick union. The Beast hates sidekicks. He hates them, all right? It, let me quote, let me quote the book, okay, to you, all right? This is what the Beast, the king of the country, says about sidekicks. The Beast says, everyone gets a voice in Oridon, although you can't let too many voices drown out reason, of course. That's what it means to be kingly, he says, perhaps a little bit more forcefully than was necessary. This man is suspicious. Let's get back to the sidekick union, because we learned some fucked up things about Oridon because of this sidekick union. The dwarves and the goblins, canonically, are cousins. Distant cousins, but they're cousins nonetheless. All of the royal dresses are made by mice. By paw, specifically by mice. They don't have seamstresses or tailors. They have mice making their royal gowns. It's hard enough to make an outfit with opposable thumbs. They're mice. Other things that this man has willingly let happen, is that woodland creatures do all of the housekeeping for their royals, like a deer, and more mice, and birds. People without opposable thumbs are loading the dishwasher. This man let non-thumbed citizens do all of the housekeeping, and then didn't pay them. We learned this because Ariel sisters, literal literal princesses of underwater kingdoms are not being paid. They do tours and Atlantis and they're not being paid. And he knows about it and doesn't care. She knows about it and doesn't care. She knows about it and doesn't care about literal princess. They are royalty, but they can't be paid to do labor. Hello, this is Persephone. Say hi the to the people, Persephone. Other things, um, Apparently, dogs go to college, but because we're in fucked up USA, United States of Oregon land, they have to pay for a college tuition. The 101 Dalmatians, of which a good 90% of their children are all the exact same age, have to figure out college tuitions. He let college tuitions, one, exist, and two, be expensive. The dwarves do all of the mining for the jewels, and they're also not paid. Moving on to the other fucked up things about Oridon is Audrey. I'm an Audrey stan. I love Audrey. Alright? She's a bit. We have a scene of these two together in their early relationship. Ben is kind of ambivalent to Audrey because he's been having dreams of a purple-haired girl. Thinks she's kind of pretty. Um, but he's like, well, I've been dating Audrey for so long that I guess I still have to be with Audrey. Now, here's the thing we learn about Audrey. Is one, that her mother, Aurora, was put into foster care and protective custody. Canonically. Flora, Fauna, and Mary Mother are a part of the sidekick Kishujin. And they're also not being paid and have to, they are fairies and have to do all manual labor by hand. Which they're notoriously bad at. Other things that we learn about Audrey is that she was given everything that she ever wanted. It's no, stated in here, my daughter will no, never know anything but love and beauty and peace and joy. 
Audrey can never disappoint her parents. Specifically, it's mentioned. Audrey cannot disappoint her parents. But you know who can disappoint his parents? Ben. Ben can disappoint his parents. This is stated in the book. Alright? Audrey's a little dumb. Audrey's a little dummy and does not know how the world works. Why? Because Aurora's like, but fuck that shit. We're gonna spoil the hell out of this person. Alright? Audrey does not know what the sidekicks union is about. Audrey is like, well, everybody loves sidekicks. But I don't care if they're being paid. Money has no meaning to me. Audrey is afraid of credit cards. The sidekick Shunin plotline gets resolved by Ben being a good person and being like, okay, let's pay people. Let's make sure that all of the 101 Dalmatians, like puppies, are funded so they can go to puppy college. Let's make sure that the dwarves get half of their stuff in retirement. Let's make sure that Genie, the Genie, the Genie is not allowed unlimited travel through the kingdom um, because the beast end quote says as his father did not want the blue skinned maniac popping up everywhere without notice remember suspicious but after descendants one where we're kind of in the world we're kind of playing around this is when the timeline starts to get funky because this is when we start having tie-in media now before for the official Descendants 1, the School of Secrets, the web series, is supposed to take place. We don't learn anything concerning or questionable at Oridon, um in School of Secrets. It's a really fun little thing that if you have like a good Tony minutes, you can kind of just go through things. And then we have tie-in books, okay? And I've got one of them. Mel's Spellbook is a tie-in book. It's written kind of like... Uh, multi-diary so it's kind of good going through the events of the first movie with each of the characters making little notes and things like that and talking with each other and talking about their plans it's really cute it's really cute if you can find it at goodwill for two dollars it's worth it fun little tie-in books with like quizzes and that's the ordon prep books and handbooks and spirit books fun not entirely important have i read them yes i do not own them but i have read them now we get in to Wicked World. Wicked World's canonical, like, existence is debated. It is canonical. It is canonical. I'll explain it. We learn about a multitude of characters. Important ones is Allie from Wonderland, Freddy, which is Dr. Facilier's older daughter. We learn more about Lonnie and Jane and Audrey. We also learn about one of Captain Hook's kids. CJ Hook. Freddie enrolls in Oridon prepped and she's kind of just here. The reason why, if you ever question like why haven't we seen Freddie, Freddie's voice actress is China Ann McLean. This has happened before she was casted as Uma, okay? I'm guessing that's why we haven't seen Freddie is because Freddie's actress is playing another character. So, but Freddie's running around Oridon prep, CJ is running around unattended, and Ali from Alice in Wonderland is here. There's also like a couple other guys, um, but they get they're unimportant. And then we go back to Return to the Isle of the Lost. Return to the Isle of the Lost is one of the books that people don't necessarily think is canonical. All right. It is. I'm certain of it. All right. Because it has mentions Allie and Freddy. It also talks about Merlin and Camelot, which are a part of Auradon, um, and Madame Mim. So if you've read, if you've watched the Sword and the Stone, the Disney movie, you'll have like a little fun time. It's like those characters. Now that Evie is good at chemistry because of Carlos, Carlos is now the tech. He's a hacker. He can hack into the dark net, which exists, which is on because of the Isle of the Lost, because apparently they have phones now. They didn't in the first book or the first movie, but they do now. And they have a second internet that is a part, not a part of the Oridon internet, which is the dark net, which they make evil schemes on. Evie has become the only person with opposable thumbs that makes dresses. Also, you remember Flora, Fauna, and Mary Mother from the Sidekick Union in the last book, where they very much wanted magic? They don't anymore. They are against magic right now. Also, I'm pretty sure they teach at the school. But they are against magic, when in the previous book, they wanted it. Maleficent is not considered a fairy in this universe. She is considered a creature, because all of the fairies are from Neverland, and they do not have anything that they can DNA track people to, which is a thing, apparently. So they can't track her with her scales. Well, not her scales. Up, oh, spoiler. But yeah, Maleficent's not a fairy. 
because all of the fairies are from Neverland. So either she is a fairy from some other place or she is a creature. Um, and I believe they refer to her as a creature. Other big thing that we learn about Return to the Isle Return to the Isle of the Lost is that magic can neither be created or destroyed, only changed. It's talked about how because magic is banished, it was pushed underground and created tunnels, like a twisting catacomb labyrinth tunnels. You can't destroy magic. You can only change magic. We haven't gotten to the second movie yet, okay? We still got some other things to go through. So we have to, uh, to go through two other Descendants um, novellas, The School of Secrets. Again, fun, but not super concerning to the timeline. We have the Descendants um, comic, which is Evie doing her runway shows, and those are really cute. Then we have Rise of the Isle of the Lost. Interesting things we hear in Rise is that there is a princess tea party which we saw in school of secrets the first the the web show there is a princess tea party that excludes evie evie is excluded from the princess tea party because the evil queen does not have any authority in oridon so she is not a princess and is excluded from the princess tea party audrey is not audrey is a part of the princess tea party and Mal is also excluded from the Princess Tea Party, despite the fact that she is dating the king, who is 17. Uh, CJ Hook is still running around Oridon, no one has caught her or cares. Curl Up and Die is another hair salon, and everyone pretty much gets their hair dyed. So uh, none of these colors, well, except for Jay, I think Jay has his natural hair color. But the purple, the frosted tips, the blue, they're all not natural. Lil Shang, Lil Shang wants to start a hip-hop career, and also rule the kingdom. About Mulan real quick, okay? Real quick. We'll circle back to it, but let's talk about Mulan. Mulan has two children. Lil Shang. His name is Lil Shang. Hip-hop apparently is huge, because Lonnie's also into hip-hop. They're from not China. It's not called China, okay? And Mulan is the empress. I'm s I'm sorry. Mulan is the empress of not China, and she has hip-hop dancing children, one of which is called Lil Shang. This series is so stupid. What? Who made that decision? It's canonical now. Other things we learn is that Mal used to be in a gang with Mother Gothel's daughter and then Harriet Hook, who is the older sister of Harry Hook, who is the older brother of CJ Hook. Ben has a yacht, casually, and a jet, casually, which means that Ben, King Ben, the 17-year-old, has carbon emissions. Okay, in a world, world full of magic, they have carbon emissions. They don't need to have it. They have magic, but they have carbon emissions instead. Also, also, remember how he's the king? He's still attending Oradon Prep, which means the headmistress, the principal of this school, can is teaching the king who can get his girlfriend and all of her friends out of detention by lying to the headmistress about how the fact that they were on a secret mission for him, the king. Other dumb shit about Oradon, sexism exists. Lonnie, Lonnie, remember Mulan's daughter, famous for, like, dealing with sexism, can't join the fencing club because it's all men. It can only be, this is a plot point in the third movie, oh, the second movie, it's, it, this is a plot point in the second movie that she can't join the fencing team because it's all men, and she's a woman. The Beast made sexism. Mulan is the empress of not China, and the Beast made sexism. Also, dwarves can do accounting. They're very good accounters, canonically. Movie 2 is when you meet these people, and they have more chemistry with all of these four. Especially everybody. They should all date. Big thing. In movie two, they haven't invited any more villain kids over, okay? Despite Ben saying that he wanted to have as many as possible over, but he was going to start with four, they haven't invited any more over, so that becomes a big plot point. It also is a plot point where they make meet Dizzy in the 
third book before the second movie. They meet Dizzy, um, Drizella's daughter. She's a sweetie. We love Dizzy in this household, okay? But she really wants to come to Oradon. They meet back up with Dizzy. Dizzy dyes uh, Mal's hair. They have the whole space between, which is a gay song about gay lovers who should kiss. Other stuff happens. Uma is trapped outside of the aisle, okay? Important. She's outside of the aisle of the Lost. And then her two boyfriends are inside the aisle of the Lost. And everyone else is still in Oridon, including Freddy, whose younger sister is on the Isle of the Lost. Okay. And CJ Hook, who is still in Oridon. No one has tried to send her back. In the fourth book, before the third movie... This is the one where they introduce Hades. Now that it's important, I'll talk about it. In the first book, Mal says that her father is human and that she does not remember him, and that Maleficent and her father getting together and having Mal was a moment of weakness, which is why Mal feels inferior. All right? Mal does not know who her father is. In the fourth book, that when Uma's talking with Hades, she's like, why, why would, she's like, why would you side with Mal? Like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Um, because it's not revealed yet. The third movie, Mal learns that Hades is her daddy. That whole movie happens. Mal's trying to shut, like, the Isle of the Lost because she's like, what the fuck is going on? She's having a crisis. Mal's always in a crisis. Mal has mommy issues, daddy issues, and desperately needs therapy. Now that we know about Mal's daddy issues, going back to the fourth book, here's some interesting facts that we learned about Ordon in the fourth book. The Royal Council for... The now 18-year-old Ben includes the fairy godmother, his principal, his dad, and his mom, and no one else. Interesting. Interesting. Your royal council for the United States of Oregon, which has a multitude of individual kingdoms in it, which they mention have their own unique cultures and, like, ruling structures and everything, are not on the royal council. The royal council is these three. Just these three. Mal isn't on the Royal Council. She's invited, like him. They don't want her there. When Ben and Mal are talking about going back to the Isle of the Lost for Mal to do like a little tour of the kingdom to meet her people, she proposes a date. She proposes a specific date that happens the exact same time as a like multi-nation trade agreement date that that men has to attend as the 18-year-old king. Actually, I don't even think he's 18. I think he's still 17. As the 17-year-old king, he has to attend the trade agreement, and his partner has to go to the Isle of the Lost alone because she proposed that specific date. Also, their money system is dollar bills, and diamonds are expensive, which means that the diamond prices are also inflated despite the fact that they have seven dwarves. Actually, no, that, that does make sense now that I think about it. If you only have seven dwarves mining all of your jewels, any jewels would be considered very expensive. That makes sense. Never mind. Suspicious. Other things that we learn is that the Magical Institute training has graduates such as Yen Sid, Flora, Fauna, and Mary Mother. Other thing that we learn that's glossed over immediately is that there are genies that grant wishes to every single one of the students that go to Agrabah State University. That's like a, a like a selling point of the school, is that genies will grant you three wishes, which is insane to give to a college-age kid. Like, I know Oridon's supposed to be like, no one's villainous here. Well, now they can be. I'm sorry. You mean that dozens of people just have three wishes if they go to one specific school? Uh, that one is bad and also i thought magic was banned genie magic is apparently not banned and is given to children the sun drop flowers that are supposed that can make you live forever incredibly common they're very common they make potions from them also magic isn't supposed to exist and then there's a single line the queen of hearts is a teacher at dragon hall so now we're here and there's a multitude of tie-in books all right You've got A Rotten Holiday, which is a stop-motion animation. You've got the novellas. You've got a shorts. you got another they're a comic. And then after, we get some new characters. All right, they've decided. I accidentally covered up Baby Cinderella. That's okay. We've got Brandy right over here. And we're introduced to the fact that these people, all of these ones' parents and these ones, this one, all went to school together in a school called Merlin's Academy, which is what Oridon Prep was 
before it was Auradon. Some interesting things that we find out in Merlin Academy is that Maleficent and Hades attended the same time as the Queen of Hearts who, if we remember from the books, runs a salon, is in at, runs a hair salon, and is a teacher. Wonderland has been closed off from the rest of Auradon, so how has the Queen of Hearts never been in Auradon since Merlin Academy, but also in the Isle of the Lost? It's because she's lying, not this Queen of Hearts. No, no, no. This is where we're gonna get in to the true timeline. Here's the thing. The Rise of Red is entirely accurate. The Beast is lying to everyone. All right, the beast is absolutely lying to everyone, and I can prove it. So here is the true timeline of Descendants. These guys went to school together. These guys went to school together. They all had their castle comings, their little stories played out, but in a more school setting than a true kingdom setting. All right, their stories played out, and then the beast had an idea. You can't change villainy. And I think he was selfish. He wanted to fucking rule. He wasn't happy with France. No, no, no. So he, being charming and having Belle, who's a sweetie, started talking to the other royals, the other royal families. And he's like, hey, what if we combine all of our kingdoms together into one big kingdom? It'll help significantly with like trade and economics and things like that. It'll make things a lot easier for everyone. And they're like, I don't really see what the benefit is. Like, what? why would I want to agree to this? And he says that if they join Auradon, their villains will be banished. Anyone who has ever done wrong will be sent away. And they fall for it. They're like, hey, that sounds good to me. Get rid of a couple of problems with like a single stone. Like fix some issues. Get some good trade agreements. Like, okay, fine. In turn for you banishing all of our villains and all of our bad people, we'll join Oridon. As he's starting to recreate Auradon and putting these plans in place, he starts to learn that the common people are not entirely thrilled with this idea because that's like a lot of their family. Like there's a kid that we learn about in School of Secrets. There's a kid that we learn about in the School of Secrets. It's an offhand comment, not like super important, but, but his great, his grand uncle is Smee, who was a pirate. So the, the villains have relatives, all right? They probably have dozens of relatives and like parents and cousins and uncles and like the goblins are cousins to the dwarves distant but you know they are and so people would be like hey the fuck like can't you do i don't know something else so he can't have this he needs to make propaganda but the only way to do like successful propaganda is through a shit ton of magic so he talks to only two other couples he talks to philip and aurora with Maleficent because he knows that they would do anything to get rid of her. And he talks to Cinderella and Charming because these two are the closest to the common people. They understand it the most because they don't really have a villain. They had a dick of a, like she had a dick of a stepmother and he picks Aurora and Philip because they have the biggest, baddest, most evil one of them all who's barely 20 years old. And she cursed a child for not being invited to a birthday party. And he says to them, hey, I can let you in on things. Here's my plan. And he lets them in on a plan. And he says to both of them that he will make a deal with them. Their their children will all be like the closest of friends. Arranged marriage is possibly on the line. Aurora and Philip are really down for arranged marriage because theirs worked out to true love. They're all besties. This is canonical. We, we've known that Chad and Ben were like best friends when they were younger. And then Ben started having ideas. So he's like, our children will be besties and you'll know about everything. Here's the plan. Because magic cannot be created nor destroyed. Magic being outlawed is in fact not their intention, but a side effect of what they did. So the be beast has Belle write a story. Not just one story, but dozens. All of the Disney movies that you've watched as a child are canonical in the Descendants lore, but they are propaganda to send the villains the Isle of the Lost, and confirm to the common people that they are in fact terrible and evil, and deserve to be brought back from the dead and banished. So he does that, and he rewrites history. They rewrite history. And part of that, he makes people forget that anything but the movies were real. Because Audrey says that her mother slept for a hundred years, yet in the Disney movie, it's it, she was asleep for what? A week max. Not a hundred years. Maleficent's not that old, because he would rather believe all of these terrible things happened. And the villains were bad. I'm not saying that they're not nice people. They're, they sh they're shit. Carlos's mother is abusive, like canonically. He didn't have a blanket or like a pillow. Like, they're bad people. 
but he needed to convince everyone that they were bad. There was a reason. But this requires a shit ton of magic. Beast goes to the genies because the genie rules. Can't wish for more wishes, which is unimportant because he has six people. He can't wish for more wishes. It can't make someone fall in love. He can't bring somebody back from the dead. It says nothing about changing the space-time continuum. So the beast goes to genie. He makes these wishes, and the genie, seeing all of this, writes in the contract that one, that the, any of the genie's kids will be taken care of, and that two, the genie magic will remain theirs. They create the Isle of the Lost to banish everybody in. They make the dome barrier, and it uses so much magic in the world that it decreases the whole pool of magic that people can draw from and to the point where magic is very unstable and they cannot guarantee results or what would happen and when people tend to use magic it tends to go awry so they ban magic partly for safety and partly so that no one can go digging into what they did but the thing is is that wonderland cannot be changed because it is a constantly in flux place. It's whack ass. The rules are weird. They don't exist. So whatever they do here cannot affect Wonderland because Wonderland exists on a completely separate plane. So the beast cannot have the Wonderland people speaking. So he closes it off, blocks them, trapping Queen of Hearts and her children or whatever future children she may have in Wonderland. Alice is very good at getting in and out of places that she shouldn't. And she remembers the before times, before Oradon. She remembers the truth. So she goes to Beast, and she says, You can buy my silence. You have to let my daughter into the academy for free. Allie's tuition for anything that she wants to go to is paid for. For the cost, Alice and all of her other children's silence on what happened in Wonderland and what happened before Oradon. And that is the Wonderland tied up in a little bow. Aurora and Philip, they're down for the plan. They have their child. They have been. They have an arranged marriage between the two. All right, they spoil the hell out of their daughter and everything. Give her whatever they want. Cinderella, on the other hand, starts having major concerns. She's looking at the villain kids, looking at the Eye of the Lost, and realizing that they are living in the same filth and squalor and the same abuse that she received. The villains may be banished, but now they are having children, and they are being treated how she was treated, and she does not like. She cannot stand that, which her hands are tied with the amount of things that she can do. So she tells Chad about it. She tells Chad about the abuse how that they're receiving, that they're eating garbage, but Chad is a dummy. Love him. He's stupid. She doesn't get anywhere, because she does not want to tell him outright, because she knows that the likelihood of him telling Ben and Ben telling his parents is high, and she cannot risk that. If she wants to enact any kind of change, she cannot risk Ben knowing. She does not know that Ben is starting to have second thoughts. So Chad knows things. He starts saying shit. He's a dick. Cinderella and Charming care for their children. They spoil them as well because both of them love having their children. Alright? Then Chloe comes along. And Chloe's real similar to her mom. They do the same thing with Chloe. They tell her a little bit more than they should. But now the aisle's open. So there's a little bit of a wait lift up off of her shoulders. She doesn't have to worry about the villain kids anymore. She, she just focuses on making sure that Chloe's good and kind and loved. They go to orientation day because Uma has questions. Uma's suspicious of all of these bitches and they try to shut her up. Uma does not trust the king. Uma trusts Ben, but she does not trust the king. So she goes looking and she goes digging. She has resources that nobody else had and she has questions and she fucking them. She realizes something. She realizes that things aren't making sense and the timelines don't work. And so she quiets because she needs to bide her time. She can't reveal what she knows just yet. Bill, the fairy godmother, talks about retiring. Uma has an in. She does not give a fuck about both going to school or like changing the lives of the youth for better. Well, she does, but she finds an opportunity because the headmistress is on the royal council. The royal council, which is now Ben and his wife and Evie and Jay and Audrey, probably, because Audrey's always involved with things, we love her. These two, they left their kingdom, which was crumbling and starting to crack in their seams at the hands of a 16 year old, all right? That is what they did. The beast created this whole fucked up Oradon like empire. And then once it started to crack, left and let his son take the blame. And Uma finds that out. Uma finds that out and she tells them. And she tells them, and these guys are like, hey, we've got to start looking into this. Let's go look at the other kingdoms. Like there's got to be clues. There's got to be interest. And she's like, I'm inviting Wonderland. And they're like, okay, cool. We're going to go split up. We're going to figure out what's going on. So these guys, 
go on their quest. And then Uma becomes the headmistress. Now she has power. First act of business is to invite Wonderland. She met Allie. Allie told her about the fact that the Queen of Hearts has a daughter. She invites the daughter because she's like, hey, if there's anything that can get to the bottom of it, it is one, opening up all of the gates so that no one is banished and cut off. Two, and it's seeing what the Queen of Hearts will do. All right, so she invites them. Cinderella tells her child that she went to school with the Red Queen, which wouldn't make sense because why would Cinderella go to school if not for the fact that he did too? They've been lying to the kingdom. And so she told her daughter, Queen Hearts has no loyalty. So she just tells her daughter too. She's like, yeah, I went here. I went here. Cinderella's two-faced. Cinderella's two-faced because she went with the beast instead of standing up for her and her people. That is why Cinderella is two-faced. Bridget hates her for a variety of other reasons too because of the whole prank situation and everything. But she's like, Cinderella used to be my best date. She fucked up. And then the whole rise of red happens and everything. And Chloe and Red go back in time. And it's not the Disney movie propaganda that the beast created. Now they're back. And now they know he's been lying 25 years about everyone's history. There is someone lying about being the Queen of Hearts. She runs a salon and she's a teacher. She figured, I'm guessing this is somebody that did not have a lot of power to her, looked around, saw that the Queen of Hearts wasn't here, and was like, well, I'm for identity theft. Stole her identity. So that's how every single part of Descendants Media is canon. And he and her are, are the true villains of the story. So that is the Descendants timeline. Um, I've been going crazy over this. Is it also kind of fucking ridiculous and probably not entirely canonical? Sure. Does it matter? No. Anyways, um, thank you for watching this video. I very much appreciate you being here. If you've made it to the end of the video, um, tell me who your favorite Descendants character is. I had somebody mention la the last video to do a Emily in Paris redesign restyle video, which I am gonna do when that um, that season released in August, and I'm gonna get back to, into more fashion videos. But if you want other videos, uh, let me know what you're interested in, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.